Simon, you're very welcome here again on the Sunday afternoon where, well, Simon, last week you told me that Donegal was going to get beat and Cork was going to win. Simon, you've got to eat your awards tonight. I have, David. I have to say, it was the most unbelievable performance from Donegal today. The level of fitness of that team has just reached new heights. It really has. I was really, really pleased with the way they played. They actually did play football. It was not as puke football as our good friend Pat would say. It was fast flowing. It was end end stuff. It was hard hitting. It was tackling. in. Donegal's turnover rate was incredible. Their discipline was fabulous. They gave it very few free kicks. Cork had to be commended they had to play. Like they scored 111. They did have a couple of wides. Hit the crossbar as well. Could have went either way. But to be fair, Donegal deserved to win the game. Carl Lacey was outstanding player in the field, he's on half back, he was everywhere. And I have to say, eat my words, and Donegal in the Iron Final. <laughs> Simon, I have to say, last week you sat in that chair, you were very confident that was. Cork was going to win, yes. and they're big, they're strong, they can do this, they can do that. Yep. Mobile, they can do everything. You have to take a hat off. I mean, how Jimmy McGuinness has, has transformed this team from being a, you know, a, a poor enough team, right? To I can tell you, Simon, these guys are contenders now. Today's performance, you talked about Carl Lacey. What about McHugh? Yes. I mean, and Thompson, those guys up and down the field yeah. all day, non stop. Uh, Simon, you know, the talk about, and maybe the press sort of, I don't know, the press talk about this system that Donegal play, yeah. but it's not a system. I, I just think every player knows exactly what they're doing. Right? Yeah. So if you know what you're doing, you can call it a system, right? The press have bought into this, I don't know what you'll call it, this, this, this notion about Donegal. Now, last year, this time last year, it was horrendous to watch, right? This okay. time round, but this time round, Simon, this time round, these guys decided, right, everybody thinks we're going to sit and do this and do this and do this, but they've done completely the opposite. And I don't think Cork knew what to do. I think, well, McGuinness has always talked about this five-year plan that he has. And yep. to be fair to him, like, if you look at the cross of the range of scores they have made in the championship this year, last year in the... the uh, in the semi-final against Dublin. At one stage, as, as I say, I always talk about this, at one stage um, I was watching it and watching Man United against uh, Arsenal and the score was the same. It was 6-2. And it was, it's just amazing that the, 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 uh, the, the change. Now, I think it's part of their five-year plan. Last year he got the defensive structure. This year he has added this breaking out and scoring. And they're the highest scores in the championship. Like, you look across today, they had, what? Well, okay, well, look, 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 look at the scores. Mc, McFadden gets five points, points? Yeah. Right? Morphy gets three, three points, Lacey gets two, right? And we go right down to uh, Kavanagh, McHugh, Thompson, McGlynn, Walsh and uh, McElhinney all scored one each. Nine different scorers across the field. But Simon, the, the, like, I, from my point of view, I remember way back in, in the 70s, Clannagale from Lorgan, born from maybe in, in down, the half-backs, attacking half-backs, yeah. attacking half-backs. <sighs> These defenders are coming up the field, they're scoring more than the fans. <laughs> McGlynn, like, look at McGlynn, McGlynn runs at least 95 yards up the field and goes back. And he's not even out of breath. It's that level of fitness. Not only that, he scores something like 1-4 in the championship this year. But Simon, you know, McGuinness takes a man off, puts young Walsh on, first touch, point. point. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and McHugh, I mean, up the one wing, down the other wing, across the backs, up at the forwards. You don't know where he's going. He's exactly. like a Scarlet Pimpernel. He is. Now, to me, they, Cork obviously changed the team and they brought in Gould and they brought in Sheehan and they brought in Kelly from the original team that was named. Now, when I heard that team in, been named out this afternoon, I said to myself, right, they're going to shoot from distance because that was their forte. That's what actually beat down in 2010, their ability to shoot from distance. Yeah. Yeah. And with this year, the fact of the matter was, Donegal had them penned most of the time in, in their own half. Well, okay. And they couldn't even get into their own half forward line. I think if, if we look at the, the just you know the goal that Cork got at the end, it sort of it really took the bad luck of the things. Yeah, right? it was a gloss because 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 yeah. Donegal had shot four or five wides mm. that maybe might have been real crucial earlier on in the game. Yeah. They had missed them, but they got them. I mean, the Cork scores: O'Neill gets one three, Cavanagh uh, gets three, three points, Cavanagh gets two, Golding uh, he gets scores from a free, Kelly Walsh uh, they got one each. That's what I'm saying. So Daniel Golding, who it was at Stanton in the All Ireland Friday 2010, gets one point, that was from a free kick. Simon, I, taken off. I, I remember them guys playing us down in Parky Creeve a couple of years ago, and they were 
they were just hammering points over from every angle. Yes. McGuinness, I don't know what he has done to this Donegal team. And I know, Simon, <laughs> when we'll talk about this later on this evening about Lance Armstrong and, and oh. the alleged uh, oh. thing that has happened to him, I don't know what. Do you know about Donegal, the, the talk about the cream in Donegal and the hills and the grass and all that? As Marty Morris he says, there'll not be a cow milk in Donegal tonight, Simon, because I think. If they're milking the cows in Donegal, whatever they're giving these footballers, I would just love a little bottle of it. Yeah. Because phenomenal. But like I know what you're saying about the system, but he has he has established a system. Now I think he maybe he has come ahead of his time. He has talked to him before this five year plan. He's now in the second year of it. They're in the all iron final. They've won two Ulsters. And now the winner of Dublin Mayo is going to face this team. And whoever the it is, whoever wins that same final is going to say to themselves, we are up against it nope. because they have this system which sometimes defies logic, sometimes defies fitness levels, and it works. Oh, Simon, look, there's no question about that. It defies everything that that, that you and me sort of are brought up to to, to think about uh, what what the football's about. You know, at the end of the day, Donegal deserved to be in the All Ireland final. Correct. Right. I would say after watching the day, Paddy Parr would be re-evaluating his, his, his odds that he gave for the game today. No doubt about it. Donegal are contenders. Donegal, well, at this minute in time, they're sitting as favourites. Now, we talk about Dublin, we'll talk about Dublin later, but this Donegal team are real serious contenders. Yeah. I have to say, Simon, mighty impressed with everything they've done today. And uh, after the match, I sort of slipped over and watched a wee bit of Liverpool and Man City. Yeah, but I and, 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 and nearly fell asleep. Uh, well, different type, different type <laughs> different of game. Type of football. Different type of game, Damien, all together. And to be fair, I thought Liverpool and Man City was quite a, quite a good game. We'll talk about that later. But getting back to Cork, the Cork are a big, strong team, very mobile, and have this ability to shoot long range points. Today, they were stopped. Now, I would like to know how that was done. <laughs> well, I do know, we, know, we see well, it. We know how it was done because we watched it. But yeah, but I'm still marvelling at the level of fitness that these guys, like, sometimes it comes in, and then suddenly they just break. Right? And I was saying, watching the game today, and I'm seeing six Donegal men streaming forward at once. And then they get to a certain point, and then some of them sit back, and then they lose possession, and suddenly they're whole back in their own half again. Yeah, but I think, Simon, what happens when somebody goes forward, somebody asks, because if you, if you watch tail ends of, of the match today, there was bits where some of the players were stepping back into the, into the breach, yes. where the guys were going forward, there was somebody sitting yeah. back in the hole. You're half forward, there's obviously some somebody sitting back. So there's no question about it. Whatever way McGuinness has got them, I mean, if you want to comment on it, you know, hit the bottom of the comments there and let us know what you think. Are we talking sense here? Mm. Are we telling you as, as it is? Or are we thinking like uh, Conor Coonan, who hadn't a clue today? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say. Well, to be fair now, Simon, he, you know, he hadn't, because he didn't know what he was doing. No, but no, I, don't, no I, dis I disagree with you. I just think that the better team won today and the better strategy won today. And Conor Cunahan is a, a very, very astute manager and a very, very successful manager. Oh, the, but we, he just, we, we take a sometimes you have to say the better team won and today that happened. But Simon, look, Cork changed their team plan. Like, yes. if we go back and look at Cork the last game they played, you know, straight ball in, big men down the middle, steaming down the road. I know that they weren't allowed to today because I, my philosophy stayed simple. If Donegal have three men back covering this, this defensive mode that they call, yeah. where's the three Cork men that was free? Why, why were they not up down the wings or wherever? You know, that's that's the other thing. So Cunningham actually changed his team. Changed his team to suit because he knew there was going to be a packed defence. So we put these guys in who hit long range points. Now, I thought we had done something we tried to do something similar in the Ulster final, okay? It, we, they just did not allow it to work because of their tenacity, because of their ability to overturn the ball, and their discipline in defence is outstanding. Yeah. You look back at those stats earlier. How many frees did they score from? Oh uh, yeah, okay. Three. Well, there's, there's no question about it. We have to. We, you have to look at the discipline because you know, the discipline is paramount. Yeah. Right. Their their discipline is it's, it's, it's not now. They do foul, but they foul you 75 metres away from goal where it doesn't really matter. Yeah. When it comes close in the goal, it's just the tenacity of the tackling. I, would, I, I haven't seen in the whole stats, I haven't been able to have a chance to yet, but I would like to see how many times Donegal turned the ball over. Oh yeah, I mean, the Cork guys, and I suppose our good friends, Pat and Joe and Colm, they were, they were all out in force today, yeah. Oh, yeah. right? Pat, I can't believe it, Pat's plan was actually... Complimentary. To have the football. Oh yeah, but it, it had to be because it was such, a, such an outstanding performance. But at half time, Joe Brawley said that Donegal would win the match. Yes. He, he, he told it exactly how it would happen. And Colin O'Rourke was sort of looking, you know, the way O'Rourke looks down yeah. at you. And, and Joe was sitting there all smiles and Pat was yeah. fidgeting. Bradley got a spot on. Donegal, once Donegal got into the groove, they were in the mode and away they went. Right and Cork had no answer, Simon. Yeah. Now, the other thing I have to say, 
the lack of yard is half time. It was eight sevens on the goal, and I, Murphy had missed a free kick, and I said to myself, maybe that was a crucial score. It turned out not to be, but second half, Donegal came out like a train, and hit them for four points in the bend spin, and that really, I think, was the end of the match as far as I was concerned. Donegal did keep that no vein front. Now the goal, I think, no put a gloss on it, but again, another thing, Cork hit the crossbar oh, yeah. at a very, very crucial time with ten minutes to go. <laughs> Could that have changed it? Maybe we don't know. Okay, <coughs> you get your bit of luck. Yeah, yeah. I think when, when we see that, to be fair, when got that bit of luck. I think when we seen that ball coming off the crossbar, I think you can see that the cork heads just drop on yes, that little I bit think, low, yeah. You know, you have to say, Simon, it was a fabulous achievement to 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 Donegal today. I can tell you, if you're from Donegal and you're trying to get a ticket, Simon, the fun's going to start now. Oh yeah, oh you know? yeah, oh yes. And don't forget now, don't forget this. This is. Uh, program here this evening uh, was Design Works Ireland to do apps and websites and everything. The design everything here, Simon, and I tell you, I'm not excited about Donegal today. I don't really know what I'm thinking about here. But no, no, could you design an app for all the rest of the counties in Ireland? Uh, no, no, that's, 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 that's a good one. Could we get Design Works Ireland to design an app to counteract Donegal? Yeah. Now I can tell you, Simon, if they do that, I'm keeping it. <laughs> 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 I'm it, and I can tell you then maybe I'm. But to be fair in. as well, I was listening to McGuinness's post-match interview, and he said, "No, he had tweaked his system to the, to the court game." All right, it was obvious court with the changes they made for the uh, the game today that they were thinking, and it was rumored throughout the week that Cork were playing 15 against 17 in training yeah. Yeah. to try and counteract this thing. Now, obviously, McGuinness has maybe gotten wind of this and tried to tweak it a little differently. Now I noticed I say a Carroll used to get on the ball a lot more than I you know, than he normally did today. And I thought that he had standing player in the pitch. I said the passing was it was just I think they got away with it to a certain extent. There was a couple of times where hitting Hail Mary passes into Murphy McFadden. Yeah. And they were just coming straight back out again. But I think after that uh, ten minutes in the first half and then that they knew that wasn't working, the tweak didn't start coming down McBrady and young thing down the wing as well. So McHugh, well, he was he was, he was the running game got established again. And it was a running game that won the game today for them. So we, we take our hats off to, to Donegal. Fantastic achievement today, Simon. Oh. Uh, truth be told, before the match, could you have seen that result coming? No. That's my opinion. I thought, okay. Cork, I thought Cork would have been had too much for them. And then when I heard the team in that, as, as it was amended, I said to myself, it's obviously what they're trying to do here, they're going to hit from 45. They have the players that do it. But Donegal did not allow them to do it. They were obviously praying for it. And came out and did the business, and you have to take your hats off, as you said. Well, I just I'm looking through uh, tweets coming in from some of the Donegal boys. Dermot Brick Malloy, All Ireland final to be part of the Donegal team is unbelievable. Supporters were amazing. Oh, they were. Simon, yeah, isn't that great? Isn't it? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And well done to uh, the Donegal guys. I can tell you, uh, at this stage of the year, you sort of wish you had a tie to Donegal, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> the closest <laughs> I get to it is maybe going. Oh no! Oh yeah. yeah you know, you, 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 you look to be part of it because there's nothing really like. Um, Going down and being part of the, the, the big game, uh, there'll be a semi-final or final, and it'll be a strange four weeks for all the Donegal guys. How, how does McGuinness deal with this now? Okay, this this is the important thing because I know from our own point of view, you know what the players will be telling you how they build up the all and you know tickets and all the hype and all this. What's McGuinness going to do? Is he going to sort of keep them away from all this, or what I does he do? I think I think well, obviously it would have to have their press commitments. It'll have their sort of. Uh, the press night, obviously. The press night, right. you know, the night with the fans and all the rest of it. Yes, certainly. But probably being way up in the northwest might have its oh, advantages. Yeah, yeah. Just you know. again looking at the tweets coming yeah. in. Paddy McBrady, can't believe I've been dreaming of this moment since I was able to walk. Words cannot describe how good this is. Good. Well, yeah, again, a young lad who's come through has been absolutely outstanding. In 19 years of age, he, he looks a monster for 19 years of age, and he has just up the ante. Got into the team and it's been absolutely superb since, since the Simon, last year. And I even see Eamon Molly's got in on the act here. He says every current former GA player predicted uh, we were Cork would win. <laughs> yep. They've all got it wrong, so uh, this well, is the sport. Myself included, I, I, I thought Cork were going to win today, and I've obviously got egg in my face. And yeah. I said, bring it on, get down. Get it on. I think Dublin Mayo be very interesting. Well, you know, just when we're talking about that, Simon, I think we've we've fairly talked out the the Donegal the Donegal uh, Cork game today mm -hmm. because uh, I'm glad to say, sitting in this chair last week, I called a Donegal win. 
So hopefully it's not, often, it's not often they get spun over me, folks, but it's true. Got that one right. So next week, Simon, I'm still going with Mayo against Dublin. You're still going with uh, Dublin. I'm still going Dublin, yeah. So just for that, we're going to maybe, we might just take a little uh, look at Dublin and Mayo. Roll it there, Sean, if you can. So we're going to look at Simon. This is Dublin and Mayo. Has Mayo got the ability to, to, to put one over the dubs? Uh, yes. You know, I have to say that like, the day they played us, they gave us an absolute hammer. Um, very impressed the whole way through the pitch. Big, strong team. Can defend. Very, very well. Okay. Played a different system than Donegal, obviously. Bit more direct. Dublin, there's their main man there, in my opinion. Alan Brogan. Oh, yeah. I, I said Simon. Alan yeah. Brogan. If Alan Brogan, there's rumours about Alan Brogan's fitness. If Bernard is the icing on the cake. Right? If Alan Brogan is not fit next week, I think Dublin might struggle. But Simon, you know, if, if, if Mayo look at, at how Donegal performed today, Correct. they can turn around and take great heart and say, look, you know, if Donegal can do this, you know, we can do it because we have the players, yep. you know, we have the mental, have they got the mental uh, attitude to do it? I think they do. The only thing is, they will miss Horn. Horn is a fabulous player. It's just a very, very, it was a freak injury and it was, it was horrible actually to watch. Well, of course, we see Mortimer, Mortimer there hitting uh, the right there. Another big miss, Simon. But like the Kevin Cassidy thing, you move on. You move on. Jim McGuinness like has moved on from the Cassidy thing. I was very surprised actually when Cassidy was was uh, put to the wayside. But like, obviously he is, he believes in the team. He believes in the team ethic, right? Nothing is more important than the team as far as McGuinness is concerned. So obviously he did the same thing. The male guys have a similar, obviously a similar outlook. Mortimer to me, fantastic player on his day. But if he's not going to adhere to the system. No point in being there. Yeah, well, as Alex Ferguson always once said, <laughs> the, the, the club is bigger than any one player. Yeah. Your team is bigger than any one player. Your county is bigger than any exactly. one player. So, you know, they talk about a collective cohesion. You know, Mayo need that to beat the dubs. And I, I, I'm still of the opinion, Simon, that if Dublin don't have Brogan next week, Dublin are in trouble. Yeah, I agree. And, and if, I was, if I was the Mayo manager, I would sort of, I would be looking at, Brogan and how to stop the yeah. other Brogan from, from, yeah. from, from being on the ball because if the Brogans aren't... You see, the other thing about Dublin is, is that a nigga called Darren Yeah, yeah. Well, look... I think he is a fabulous player, but it's just... just him. I don't see that such Jason Sherlock like there. But, like, when he is on song, he is a fabulous player, but which Darren McHale is going to turn up today? That's, next week? that's the other thing, you know, and the pressure's going to be all on the Dubs next week because yeah. everybody expects the Dubs to win, right? Except me. Well, yeah. you do, I don't. So I, I'm expecting, I just hope that Mayo have, uh, they come into the game with the right attitude. Yeah. I know their miners got a bit of a, a sickening crew part today, Simon. They were cruising and then they, they lost that Well, game. I mean, to be fair in that game, uh, I thought that game was probably one of the worst miners I've ever seen. The amount of turnover and it was on gravel, unforced turnover. It was, the passing wasn't good. Now, I was talking to a referee about the big decision in that game since, and the big decision was the Meath penalty. Now, I saw that uh, O'Rourke said it was very unfortunate, he didn't think it was a foot block. Uh, Spillane said he didn't think it was a foot block. Brownlee said it wasn't a foot block. I was talking to David Carr, very good pretty much referee, and he says the term foot block is more or less a soccer term. He says it's the way the, the leg, he says, the intent. Was this the, was this the goalkeeper? Uh, the, the, the male. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't see that much because we no. were away. Carr Krupp was playing Sarsfield so, today in the league. Now, in my opinion, I didn't think it was a penalty. Right, now here's one for you, Simon. Right, sorry, I'm having I thought it was a penalty, right? Oh, according, thought penalty. Oh, sorry, I thought it was a penalty. But according to the pundits, and I'm saying to myself, what is this room say? I'm sorry, David, he sort of cleared off me. He thought it was a penalty. <laughs> okay, uh, my, my, my belief on this, Simon, is dead simple. A goalkeeper's are to block the ball. Yeah. And he can use any part of his body to stop the ball from getting into the back but of the net, right? I know, I know you can turn around and say, and you're right, we, we have taken this... I suppose this call, the, the foot block, yeah. right, in, into it. A keeper in my book is entitled yeah, but to Damien, use he, any he, part. He, he, but he's not entitled to put his foot out. I'm just looking at it. Oh, well, okay, right, 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 okay. Right, now, I was at a, at a club game there a couple of weeks ago where the keeper did come out and did a soccer style stave. Right, that's fine in soccer. In Gaelic football, that's termed as leading, that's right, David, uh, David, as David calls it, leading with the leg, which is... Ah, uh, well, okay. Which, if, if you do it in any other part of the field in Gaelic football, yeah, right. slide tackle. Right, right. You yeah. can't slide no, tackle. Can't, yeah, you can't, fair enough. I suppose, Simon, when, when you look at that and you see the hurling and the yeah. way the hurling goes, like last Sunday, the hurling was mighty. We yeah. talked about that and it was fantastic. And then during the week, we had to listen to all the, I suppose, all the nearsayers talking about, mm. you know, what went on around yeah, the, the shenanigans around the Yes, the but Simon, you know, to me, semi final of an All Ireland, 
this is where it's going to be. This is where you have to put your, your, put your heart in your yep. hand. You have to put your life on the line and all yes. that. And you have to step up to the mark. And that's what the hurlers do. And that's why I admire the hurlers. And, and the footballers then, like, you know, the foot block to losing all Ireland. That's a hard one, Simon. It it's is a hard. That's a tough one. It is tough. But look, we, we, the referee, Barry Pledlam, he made the call. And made the call, yep. Was that? yep. Simon, I was doing umpire last night at a match, and the ball was coming in, and I'm looking up here and going, squinting up and making sure. And then, is it a wide or is it a point? You know, we got them all right. That's good. All the the main thing. So don't forget, folks, put your comments in. We want to see some comments coming in here on our Sunday show. Let us know what you think here. Uh, do you agree with what we're saying here about Donegal, about Cork, about Mayo? Simon, I'm still going for Mayo next Sunday. Uh, Carr Kruppen have a, a lovely tie to, to Mayo with Billy Joe Patton. Billy Joe, yes. And, uh, of course, the great Willie Joe played for Mayo. So our club is fully behind Mayo in the march for Sam next week. Yeah. So no, I just... I just Maybe, I'm saying to myself, April was fit, fine. Dublin in the All Ireland semi final, the crowd will lift them. It'll be, it'll be close, but I just think Dublin will shade it. Okay, so. So we're talking about a rerun of the, if, if I'm right, a rerun of the 1992 All Ireland final. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. I was there. Years. Yeah, that's when Meath caught us for the Miners. We thought yes, we were one right. getting ready to pull. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, FWD, when you're talking about a rerun of the net, 20 yeah, years yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you what, I still think Donegal will win it. So but I. anyway, good luck to uh, Dublin and Mayo next week and just hope that Mayo <laughs> can beat the Dubs next Sunday. Simon, you're going with the Dubs. Simon, your own wee club had a good wee win. Uh, two, two great weeks, a uh, great week, Damien. Uh, if uh, our senior men had uh, a great win over Banbridge on Friday night in the Down uh, Intermediate Championship, not 15 uh, 2 to 8. So we're now into the uh, Intermediate si uh, Quarter Finals, and we have. I'm just going to put the fixtures up here for you folks. Here we are here, Damien. All right, scroll down there. Uh, so Simon, you're gonna you're gonna look at the, the uh, pictures here. Okay, so. so we'll have it in the semi final, quarter, quarter finals. Just hold on down there, David. Uh, Drum Gallagher and Stanley Clone, and then it's in Park Guest on September the seventh, and we have ourselves on September the seventh in St Patrick's Park in Newcastle, Breed against Bosco, and then in the next quarter final is Tara Cross versus Tony Lish, and then we have Warren Point versus Bally Martin on Monday the September the tenth in Park Esler. Now, how many right? Uh, one point, Bally Martin. I would say one point. They're going well in the second division at the moment. Uh, now, the next one, I think, ourselves and Breda. Now, Breda are in fourth division and are flying at the moment. And they've only lost one game. But you would <coughs> fancy, Simon, you would fancy yourselves for that. Yeah, well, but, but they'd, be, they'd be in a revenge mission, Damien, because uh, three years ago, was it on the playoff to stay in Division 3, we beat them by a goal in the last couple of minutes. So, well, okay. it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be a tough one to call. From Gathi and Stan Clone, I think it's the most interesting fixture of the world. It's near like a local derby. It is a local derby, so it'll be tough. And Darren Cross flying as well against Tyler Lish. Again, horrible call. I, have a, mm, I know if a good lad of friends are this, it's still Darren on that one. And perhaps from Gath. From Gath gave us an absolute tank in there about three weeks ago. And uh, Paggy Downey was in some form. So there you have so it. So I that's, that's think, yeah. And then we're looking here at the, uh, the qualifiers then for the senior championship. Not a big fan of this. I, I'm, I Simon. Now I'm, I'm, I'm looking in from our man. I'm trying to wrap my head around here. What's going on in the Dine Championship? <laughs> because yeah. somebody's winning, they're drawing, they're losing, they're winning, and they're still in the championship. Yeah. So can you explain to folks it's, what's it, happening? It's more. Like, it's like a sort of cross between the Champions League format and the the back door. <laughs> it's very strange for me too. Now, these are the qualifiers. So in the qualifiers, like the say for example the back door games. So. In September 7th, we'll have Australia against Clondoff. Then we have, because these teams will be beaten in the championship, all right, then we have Longstone against the Kingdom. And on September 7th as well, that's after our game at half eight. And then <coughs> Kaku, we have Down Patrick against Castle Well, and it's on at four o'clock on September the 8th. And then September the 9th, we have, uh, sorry, September the 10th, we have Savile against Ballyholland. So all these teams have been beaten in the championship, but they get another bite at it. Well, what's that, well, what about the teams that have won in the championship? They're all through. They're all, they're all, so all this, all through. this is the, the, yeah. the, the Burn, backdoor teams. Bridge, oh, these are the backdoor teams. So these right. are all the teams who have been beaten in the first round games, and then they're all back in. Right, so, so once now they're beat, they're gone. Once now they're beat, they're gone. Right, okay. So then they, they come in against then the teams that are ready yeah. in it, so obviously then there's going to be two, two drums. Yeah. One so it's one with the, the teams who have qualified at your legacy like, or Mayo Bridge Burn. Simon, you know what? Wouldn't that be great to have that live? 
that draw live here on the, on the Sunday oh, Sport. <laughs> so Paul Rennie, if you're listening in this evening, <laughs> yeah. we, we put that out to you. We could do that draw live here. Uh, Simon could pick out the, 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 the yeah, qualifiers sure. and I could yeah. pull out the other ones and that, yeah. would, be, that would be a good one, Simon. It would be. So uh, that's going to be interesting. So, so we'll just like, have these games, David. We'll have a look through these. Okay, so we'll have Restrava against Clendoff. I would say Clendoff. Yep. Uh, Longstone against the Kingdom. Another wee local derby. Yes. Uh, the stone. Stone, I think okay. stone with Mark, okay. Poland, right. Mark Poland and, and Ambrose, I think, just maybe a bit too him. Now, Dan Patrick had a very interesting win over Byrne last week in the league. Now, uh, all the Byrne men were telling me, oh, that's well, such and such messing, and such and such messing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, I have quite strong ties to Byrne, obviously, through school and that. And uh, I think, now, Dan Patrick, and big turlies playing, we haven't been getting middle of the field. Uh, so, I would cast the well. Cast the well, obviously, a good championship team down. Hard one to call, but I'd say, I'd, mm, Dan Patrick. Dan Patrick. Okay, okay. That's, that's, that's the Down Championship. Down Champions. And then the last fixture, obviously, Savile versus Bally Owen. That'll be a very yeah, another 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 derby. Yeah. yeah. Will Danny Cuse be fit for Danny that? Danny Cuse. Danny, Danny, from what I was talking, I was talking to Danny's two aunties the other night, and uh, Danny is out for the rest of the year. Out for the rest of the year. So, yeah. I, Bally Holland, going strength, strength, I think. Going well this year? Yeah. Going well? Yeah. Simon, Ballyhoned. We, Ballyhoned. Yeah. There we go. We're going for Ballyhoned. So, uh, sorry to all my Savile people, especially the ones who I think. Sorry about that. Sorry about <laughs> Claire's listening. We're, yeah. we're sorry about that one. But that's the way we see it here on the Sunday Sports Show. And of course, this uh, Sunday Sports Show is sponsored by Design Works Ireland. And uh, we thank them. We've, we've put one out to the lads here. We've asked them to design an app for to, to counteract Donegal. No. So, yeah. <laughs> that'll be a good one, Simon. And if they do that, I'm getting the first look at it because I'm going to use that for Armagh. Simon, yeah. we, just before we go, we also have to say uh, well done to a couple of your girls. Yeah, I'm just, just looking through these results here, folks. And in the ladies' um, championship, intermediate football championship today in uh, <coughs> Armagh, we had uh, Kalevi. Okay, we're, we're trying to look out here. Uh, it. It's the next one, sorry. So what we're doing is we're scrolling down yeah. here, looking through the, the results coming in. But Simon, Simon, uh, obviously Keith is in the Sacred Heart. So and we have Kalevi, sorry, Kalevi, 314. Look at it again, I've knocked it off. Oh again. Yeah. But Simon, 39. So that was a great result for Kalevi. Yeah, super, super result. Uh, they, they have been working hard, Simon, to win this Intermediate Championship. And I know speaking to Sinead Reel uh, last year, she was very disappointed. Aileen Matthews was very disappointed and all that. Well, but Aileen had some game today, but that's the thing. She know, scored I, two eight, didn't yeah, so, <laughs> so, like, I know, like, I said to Sinead, you know, keep at it, Sinead. You know, there's nothing like playing football. And she said, I don't know about this. I'm, mm. I'm awful disappointed. They come back and they win the Intermediate the Championship. championship. They beat yeah. Cross McGlenn in the scoreline yeah, the day of 3.14 to 3.9. Simon, and of course, some of your past yeah, pupils. Yeah, quite a few of them there, you see. Well, Sinead actually is a single girl too, but, but before my time, uh, in Hollywood, Francis Quinn and Claire, Claire McConville. So I'm very proud of them. Well done, guys. Well done to Kalevi. We, we take our hats off to Kalevi. They won the, the Ladies' Intermediate Championship and the March On into Ulster, Ulster. Simon. So yeah. well done to Kalevi, we, we, we said to Kalevi. And their men, they won last night in the Intermediate Championship as well. So they're into the quarter. Semi-finals. Yes. Semi-finals. And St. Peter's what, beat Silverbridge last what night. What way so does that work now, Damien? Is, is Clevey a first division club? No, yes, Clevey. What, what has happened in Armagh? Armagh have restructured the leagues. Yeah. Division 1, 2 and 3, three. right? So it, it's probably, again, like Jimmy McGuinness, tweaking the system, Simon. What they decided this year was they would go with the three leagues, right? And uh, it's 16 league. First division, second division, third division. They wanted all division one teams to play senior football, all right. division two teams to play so yeah, senior, obviously and, yes, yes. and all, all division three to play junior. But I think the delicates they, they wanted the, the championship to remain as it is because then it gives the, t the teams one more chance just to settle down. So yeah. from next year on, I do believe that there's going to be all teams in Division One senior championship, all teams in Division Two intermediate, and all teams in Division Three junior. I think and that's down or heading towards that way as well. Well, I think I think it's logical, yeah, yeah. you know, because when you know you, when you when you look at it, the like Calivi probably should be playing in the senior championship, yeah. but you know they're in the, they're in the, I think they're into the semi finals. St Peter's beat Silverbridge last night. St Peter's. Mm. St Peter's could be dark horses here, Simon. Yeah. They played really well last night. They scored 20, I think 21 points last night to 112 again, Kalevi. So a great result for St Peter's. Played well. So it, it's and and Wolf Tones also won last night there, Division mm. One, but they're bottom Division One. So it's going to be interesting, Simon, to see how the championship pans out now, man, next year. And obviously then the senior championship.
championship. Now there's a wee change in the senior championship. Car Crop and, and Sarsfields was to be on Monday week. It mm -hmm. has now moved to the Saturday, so it's on uh, yesterday fortnight. All right. So it's going to be on on the Saturday. That's, I think that's, that's the eighth. Yeah, yeah, the eighth. eighth. The so it's going to be a double header. Car Crop versus Sarsfields <coughs> at half five in the athletic grounds, and then Bally McNabb versus Pierce Oaks uh, at seven o'clock. So that's a double header. For, for the Armagh Senior Championship and then Collyhanna versus uh, Collyhanna versus Colleville and Cross McGlen versus uh, Mahari uh, on the Friday and the Saturday. Mm. So that's the way the Armagh Senior Championships come on towards the, 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 the semi final stage of that, Simon. Mm. Again, your call on any of them, Simon. Cross yeah. McGlen versus Mahari. Mahari. Cross. Uh, well, that's going to be a tough one, Simon. I know. Well, funny I said, I was talking to Kerry Brennan there uh, in the gym there last week and he said every time they go down to Mahari, they get a game. It's going to be a tough one. And he thinks that this year will be probably the toughest the toughest test so far will be the Mahari game. And then Cullihanna, Cullaville? Well, Cullaville won the intermediate last year, obviously. And Big Mike and Heaton charged them. He's, uh, he has them flying from what I hear. Did very well in Ulster as well. Uh, Cullihanna, will Kieran back? Don't think so. Uh, Kieran, funny enough, as you speak, I'm looking at the time. That's now, right, in, just in, yeah. in five hours' time, they're playing Cavan in the uh, New York the championship. championship. So yeah. there's a big, obviously, a local connection there. Ryan O'Hare, Paddy McCullough uh, playing for Cavan, McKeever, Donaghy, and Clark playing yeah, for, for, for Leitrim. Leitrim. So, so uh, again, I think, Simon, the way that works on it, that's on a league sort of a basis. As well. So I don't know if you could beat the night. I think they're still in it. But Holly Hanna, Colleville, Holly Hanna played very well. Uh, last, time out, last time out to beat Drummond T. Mm. Type one. Could be a draw. Type one. <laughs> draw. We're draw. Too many, too many, okay. too many people in both camps. We, 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 we can I'll go, go for a draw. I, I'll go, I'll, I'll stick my neck out. Colville. Right. Colville, right, okay. And then obviously uh, we go then to the next ones where we have Pierce Oaks versus uh, Ballon McNabb. Well, what, I, mean, I, would, I would have to be Pierce Oaks in that one. Carrot Crop and Sarsfields. <laughs> After the day, Simon. Sarsfields. What, what happened today? Well, Sarsfields gave us a bit of a tank in the day. You know, the beat us, the beat us by nine or ten points down in the high moss. Uh, Carrot Crop and I don't know, Simon. <laughs> well, Damien, then, Championship is oh, a totally yeah, different animal. I know, I know, I know. Championship um, is a totally different animal. Uh, uh, it'll be a neutral venue. It'll be. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, let's hope, Simon. Patrick, let's hope that Sarsfields had their big game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go. I, I have to stick my neck out in that one. I go for Carrot Crop. Carrot Crop. So that's the Armagh Championship. Well, Simon, we've sort of rattled around the GA world pretty much as we speak we're looking around now it's coming up to probably 25 to 8 and we're enjoying the fun here i hope you're enjoying it we haven't got any too many comments in uh, with that much to do here simon go we'll back when we looked last week we talked about uh, the olympics but we never revisited the, the, the olympics but we're going to do that very very shortly just want to see any more tweets coming in and you know you can tweet us coming in here as well you can hit my tweet or whatever uh, and let us know what you think of the show here this evening it is uh, simon it, uh, you know the olympics were in the post olympics and then we yeah. have the, the other olympics coming the up Paralympics the Paralympics coming, up, coming yeah. up yes and of course well, just look, Simon, the draws made for the Intermediate Championships. Intermediate semi-final, Wolf Tones mm. versus St. Peter's, a local derby down yeah. there. And, and, and so yeah, Madden Mullaban against Kilevi. So, that, you know, that's, 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 that's two local derbies. Mm. Simon, that's, that's two super draws. Absolutely super draws. Mullaban versus Kilevi in mm. the Intermediate semi-final. And Wolf Tones, OK, I'm going to stick my neck out here, Simon. Where, where did Madden Mullaban play? Uh, that that could be that it'll probably be in uh, the athletic grounds. That could be. Uh, but, but then for the winners, I play. Can you oh, be? I don't. I don't know when it'll be played. But we look at it here and we see Madden versus Mullaban. That's probably maybe tomorrow night. Yeah. Maybe played tomorrow night. I'm not sure. But Madden Mullaban versus Kalevi. I'm going to stick my neck out, Simon, and go for Kalevi and mm. the, for the winners of that one. Wolf Tones versus St Peters. Wolf Tones Division One, St Peters Division Two. <laughs> I I, th I can tell you. I was pretty impressed with St Peter's last night, so mm. I'm going to go for a Kalevi St Peter's final in that one. So <laughs> if anybody doesn't agree with me, that well, that's fair enough. You know, that's just don't know when when that's going to be on. So Ma Madden Mullaban. Oh, that was a draw today, Simon. That was played this evening. That was played this evening. Full time Re Madden. Yeah. Replay next Sunday in Callahan. Madden one seven Mullaban two four. Replay next Sunday in Callahan at oh, five thirty. There we go. So that's why. See, got a first here, Simon, on Destiny yeah. during the Sunday Sports Show. Olympics was. We did talk last week about the the rowers, and we did talk oh. about uh, what it meant to the rowers. And I think we have one. Have Sean, roll it. Yeah, down. Alan Campbell. So I stand. You know, the, the, the he, was, he had to say he was outstanding. And the, I says, said to me that was probably the most emotional, you know, the, the, the interview of the whole games. Yeah, Simon. When we when we look at these guys, I mean, you know, they left everything. Yeah. On, 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 the, on, the, on the water. Look, look at them, just, if you can see them now, look, folks, they're just flat out. It's fantastic, Simon. That, that, tell, the, that picture tells it, the tale. It, it tells, yeah. You know, it it's, tells it's, it's, the it's, story. It's, yeah, it's fantastic because, 
you know, the, the, the nothing left. Nothing they put it all. Left. They put it all in their performance and got their right rewards. You know, superb. You really, really can't fault that. You know, <laughs> you can't talk. Well, I know. I mean, they're, they're absolutely just everything. They've, they've put everything on the table. So well done to them. Uh, we have to say, a fantastic achievement. Oh, yeah. You know, and again, we have to emphasise, Simon, that uh, you know, this wee part of the country here, yeah. like, we have five medals. Yeah, superb. Yeah, so Funny, I was just reading their papers there as well. Like, the, the interest in Rowan now has... <laughs> That's just uh, well, no, here, 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 right. Okay, so here, here's the other angle. I've I've been looking at the statistics about you know the Rowan and what have you, and it shows like out of the is it the public schools or the private? Yeah. No, the public schools yeah, in England. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is where all the money people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how they work out public and private because yeah. it's back to front sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, public schools are for like say your your, your fee paying schools. But, but the, yeah, but this the, the, this is where most of these Rowans are coming from. Haven't said that, Damien. In the past, since since I think it's not the last Olympics, like before that. British Rowing Association has uh, put a, invested a lot of money in state schools, and it's gone now 50-50. So it's it's great, like you know, fair play. I'm yeah, no, not saying so the two camels go to the. No, 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 they, 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 they went to. Uh, they went to Coleraine. They went to Coleraine. Yeah. So, so yeah, they didn't go to yeah. public school. They went to so army school. So the fact of the matter is, they, they have come and come through the system, and they say they're very lucky because Coleraine is so close to the, the, the band, band you know? Rowing Club, and the, obviously the school has a wonderful tie with them. So they have used that connection. To establish themselves, yeah, get, into the, get into the British Royal Elite squad and win the medals. So, well, well done, I, that's, that's, you know, that's just, uh, maybe that's just, I think it's, it's a way to take off this first board. Again, the other side of the coin, you have Katie Taylor, Barnes, Conlon, John and Evan, yeah. and, the, and the Elite and the squad of Boxing. Yeah, and it proves, Simon, I, I mean, it proves the investment both in the, their own. Yes, it's all about the, the British are putting their own, the, yeah. and the Irish team is put into the Boxing. Just rewards. But Simon, just when we were talking about the Olympics, we have to wish Lawrence McGivern the very best because yeah. I believe he's swimming on Friday. Friday, that's right. right. So Lawrence, uh, from all your friends back here in Uri, we wish you the very best. We hope that uh, you can come and win us a, a gold medal. medal. You know, at least, uh, well, all you can do is your best. So mm -hmm. uh, the whole of Uri and Morn is behind you. And of course, Destination Uri is 155% behind you, Lawrence. So the best <laughs> why of the Well, 200%, well, 200% <laughs> whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, Lawrence. Good luck. We, we wish you well. That's yeah, all we can say. We wish great. you well. And, and any other... Any other we, um, any other we uh, local athletes that participate, and we would love to have you say, do well. That's all we can say. I'm sort of looking at the screen here, Simon. I'm trying to scroll down here and see uh, how how it's going. But look, we we wish them all the best. So. Um, the old, the old comments are very poor the night time. I mean, we want more comments coming in. So if you're watching in here, don't be afraid to put a comment in and then let us know what you think. Simon, when we talk about the Olympics. We talked about Bradley Wiggins and the, how good he was in the Tour mm -hmm. de France, and we talked all about that last week. But breaking news, Simon, this weekend about Lance Armstrong. Uh, you know, is he or has he or whatever? We well, don't know because again, you know, yeah, we're waiting for the scrub provocation. But like, it looks like as if like his, his old teammates have come out against him, like the Floyd Landis and all those guys, and have said that he did do it. He did it in front of them, and it's the U.S. postal team. And to me, it's just a tragedy because the man overcame. A personal tragedy. Yeah, even for kind a personal tragedy to to get himself to the pinnacle of the sport. To me, probably the hardest, the hardest event to win in world sport. But Simon, you know, the hardest annual event to win. But, in world sport. but I mean, you know, I, I I'm still I'm still confused about this whole issue because I'm still not convinced that 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 Lance Armstrong has 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 been taken dope. And I know this the the Tour de France, you know, every year it's right. So they decide to take the seven titles off him. What about the guys that come second? The only problem is what? Jan Ulrich was second when he's already been He's been gone. Yeah. So so then <laughs> yeah. well he, right, just when we we're on this debate Simon. If you break the rules and you cheat, should you lose your title? If being the case, what about Rangers and the Scottish titles? Yeah, well you know, it's okay, it's a totally different scenario because it's an individual sport. You but, know. but Simon, the, the rule states, you know, like, yeah. did, did Nessie Milan lose a title because of, of, of sh uh, breaking the rules a couple of years ago? Uh, no, it was uh, Juventus, we're putting into the second division. Yeah, mission. so, so, I mean, like, if, if, if they're going to take the title of uh, Lance Armstrong, it's right, seven, seven Tour de France yeah, titles, right? So, why obviously, should Obviously, yeah, okay, you can say about breaking the rules. Uh, now, the ones, obviously, with Rangers not happening, it's all financial. To, to, uh, Lance Armstrong has been accused of performance enhancing, using performance enhancing drugs, and now he's to enhance performance but, to win but the title. But, but you, could, you could say also that, that Rangers uh, use the, their money to, to financial to incentives so to. Yeah. Yeah. So but like, yeah, to be fair, like uh, the guys in the pitch probably weren't, weren't really physically involved in that. Oh no, but I mean, uh, but you know, I'm not. You know, all I'm saying is that, so that if the, the rules are broke, yeah, 
Yeah, and they're, 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 like, yeah, yeah, there is a program by the, the authorities who are governing these clubs, for example, New Classic Rangers. Yeah, but I think that it's... Um, so I'm not sure. I'm I not think... No, I, I personally think uh, this is a totally different thing. Um, using performance has some drugs. Now, <coughs> obviously, obviously people will say, oh, cycling is riddled with it. And unfortunately, it has a very, very poor track record of drug abuse. Now, but if you look at... <coughs> if you look at, for example, uh, cycling, and you look at, for example, the actual event itself, the Tour de France, right? Okay. 3,965 kilometres around France, up and down mountains, you know, valleys, hills. Everything. You know, everything. It's, 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 you know, it's a tough, it's a tough one. Right? right. Now, that's one event. Right? You have also the Vuelta, which is on at the moment. Yeah. And you have the Giro d'Italia. You also have the World Championships, Tour of Britain, Tour of Ireland, Tour of Australia. Let's take the golf. You have no different, you know, two events. Right now, the actual physical endurance of cycling, you know, I, I would find it very hard for people not to be able to you know, take you know, supplements you know, to help them because it is so hard. Now, I'm not saying man's right or wrong, but it's just the actual nature of the sport. Well, Simon, I suppose <laughs> when you look at the whole thing the other day and you see how Donegal performed today, <laughs> you know, maybe a wee, a wee bit of milk from Donegal. Well, uh, <laughs> no, that's, that's different thing altogether now, but I think it's just, I was funny, I was, I was reading about Donegal's uh, training regime and like they're talking about it's six meals a day and they're, uh, you know, training in the morning, training in the evening and the training they're doing is specific to each person. Yeah, and it's, 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 but it's just a, a totally professional setup in the way they train. Simon, you know? it's, it's, it's absolutely tough, there's no question about it and, you know, it, it, you know, from I suppose, you know, just from watching the sport, it's awful disappointing when you see the likes of Lance Armstrong being pulled into this, yes. this quagmire and, 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 and if he did take, if he did, if he did take these and these drugs and what have you, you know, it's, it's a sad time because, you know, like, where does the whole thing end? Yeah. I know now, like, uh, you know, the, the, the people are, I know poor Bradley, Bradley got, uh, every time there was a press conference he gets he gets scunded with them and he yeah. just turned around and told them to go away, don't be an animal anymore because, like, Bradley Wiggins is, is a super athlete and he's, he, he, he has he's no put himself, yeah, he's yeah. Put, he's put himself both on the track and, and off and, off, and on the road. So, yeah, so oh yes. Yeah. So, uh, it's just, it's a pity now, it's just a pity because it, uh, Lance Armstrong has been a legend in the cycling, so we, we, we it's just really, it's, it's, they watch the spaces. I don't well, yeah, yeah, yet, I think, but yeah, I think there's going to be more to it. And I know he's probably got fed up. I'm not just fighting this anymore, so yeah, I'm not going that. You know, it's just people just say, keep saying, harking and harking and harking about it. The fact of the matter is, he passed every drugs test. And like, to be fair, and the Tour de France, the drugs testing regime is very, very strict. And they're all tested after each no, stage. So, Simon, you know, I suppose, you know, if. if you go through the whole lot of them and you get past everything and then that's it. That should be done and dusted. They shouldn't be revisiting it in years, like mm. past years ago, come back seven years ago, eight years ago. It's like everything else, I suppose, in the, in the, the way things is going. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like laptops, it's like computers, it's like iPads, yeah. it's iPhones. You know, like, I mean, when you look at your phone, look at my phone, there's a difference <laughs> between night and day. Because, you know, every, every year things yeah. move on and move on. And yeah. I don't think they should be revisiting that, you know. So... Uh, we, we were going <laughs> to, Sean <laughs> had it on, on, on his iPhone. Uh, <laughs> on his iPhone, yeah. So, uh, Sean. We were coming in. Yeah, so I'm trying to look here at the bottom of my comments here, but I'm not picking up, but we're going to see. Thanks, Sean. So, uh, Sean. Okay, Mark says, Donny Gobble, brilliant. I uh, hope they win the final. Yep, definitely agree with you there, Mark. They were absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, that's it. That's it. So well done to Donny Gall. Mark, thanks a million for that. Uh, we, we'll keep you posted. So mm. I think, Mark, I tipped Donny Gall to win today. I'm going to tip them to win the All Ireland the way they're going at the minute. So, yeah. Um, well, we being, being an, 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 an Ulster man, I like, I like to see a Ulster team win it, but it'd be interesting. Dublin Mayo, Dublin and Croke Park. <laughs> Simon, you're gonna you're gonna start yeah. re, 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 yeah, see, regurgitating okay. that one. Oh, no, no, no. I, I'm I'm quite happy. I'm quite happy, Simon, to go with what what we have. So <laughs> we're looking here now. We'll see now. Um, these new iPhones, Simon. I'm sort of <laughs> <laughs> technology. We're talking about technology earlier on there, Simon. I I like my old phone where it's still yeah. simple. When I touch these phones, they just sort of disappear. So I know I'm supposed to be looking at the bottom of the screen here, but I've gone again. I've gone again. So <laughs> I'll go back to me here. I'm sorry about this, but I'm handing the phone back to Sean. He's given it back to me here. Um, full time Madden 17 Mullaban 24 replay next Sunday in Cullianna. Yeah, we've already got that one. So we already had that one. We picked that one up. Simon, there's no doubt about it. Technology is moving ahead. You're an IT teacher in the, in the school, right? Mm. The Sacred Heart. You know, when you look at the way technology is going, did you ever think Donegal would be doing the same? 
Oh yeah, but like I just I'm just looking at uh, today, for example. Um, I noticed that all of the officials were mic'd up today. Did you see that? Well, that, 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 I mean, that's, that's, that's a given, Simon, because yeah. that's, that's what they're supposed to be. Yeah. They're supposed to be mic'd up all the time, that's for sure, you know? You know, so, um, um, and I know they're, they're, they're looking at this new technology f uh, for Hawkeye, for the points. Ah, no point, Simon. Look, what I tell you, forget about Hawkeye. You know, when you, when you, if you can kick a ball over the bar, like, if you're going to spend, say, £100,000 or a million pounds on a Hawkeye mm. system for one point in the year, right, why can our ma and Dan not be where Donegal is, Simon? Oh, so right. says, yeah. you know, <laughs> what, what, What's the logic of that, Simon? Well, if that, if right. Donegal can turn it round, Jimmy McGuinness comes in well, and he brings, he brings a beaten team to win... The beat, well, 2010, we beat them in Donegal by five points. So, so Simon, what is the, what's the secret? Well, obviously, I think... Well, they do have the players. That's the one thing. Two, they, they, they have a system and it's working for them, right? It's, I think uh, it, McGuinness was on maybe three to four years. He said five years. And I think that he maybe he's gone ahead of his time. Last year it was all about establishing this defensive. And like, to be brutally honest, like what Mr. Spillane described as pure football, last year Donegal were playing it. I firmly believe that. This year they've added a new string to the bow. This brilliant defence. And this, I think, it's the level of fitness enables them to do that. Simon, there's no, there's no question about that. When we look at, 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 how, at how Donegal definitely moved on, but the bottom line is, Arma had the players, Down have the players. Why can we not do it? Well, that's, that's, that, that's the question. Yeah, well, you see, I think it's just... Um, mm, it's a hard one to call. I think, as far as Down is concerned, as I said, as I spoke last week, I think we have too many players that have gone. So you're reckoning, Simon, that the players have, that have gone off are... are, yeah, are you know, you know, right, obviously we've got two who are uh, superstars in the AFL. We've got guys who have emigrated, James Colgan and uh, Peter Fitzpatrick. And there's four outstanding players. Damien Rafferty injured five, you know. I think an all in all kind of something like eight last week, wasn't it? Yeah, the, just when we talk about Damien Rafferty, I was talking to him there during the week. Well... Things maybe aren't as bad I as, heard as, well. as it looks. He, yeah. he, he may have to uh, he may have to go in and have a wee operation, but he reckons that uh, he could be back. So that's a good one for Down. So mm. uh, Damien Rafferty could be back. Uh, Damien was uh, in 2010. Damien was given the Spur of uh, Brian Morgan Award, and he was probably our outstanding defender in the whole lot of campaign. Simon, we're just getting some uh, some little comments in. Uh, Niall says, "Love the the best with coverage. Are you going to do any more?" Well, Niall, yeah, we, we hope to be covering more local soccer matches. Simon, we did cover Bestbrook yeah, and Windmill the other night. Very good, Washington. Down Washington. in Bestbrook, we have to thank Sean again and Dara. It was raining. Uh, the conditions were horrendous. horrendous yeah. But we got five goals, two penalty, or two sends off, and a penalty. Yeah. And the score. Uh, I was watching the three off yeah. and uh, two, three, two, back to three, two. Yeah, and, and I got a few comments, and I have to say, you know, I was calling uh, a line ball was a throw in, but yeah. officially it did cross the line. <laughs> and a wide ball, well, once it goes out, and it is a wide, but it's a, a goal kicker corner. But we learn it all the time, Simon. Yes, now we're definitely going to be covering more matches. No, and I suppose if you would want maybe your local team covered uh, for a live soccer mm. match. Let's email Destination Yuri here and uh, we'll, we'll pick a match and we'll do it because uh, it's definitely, Simon, we're creating, uh, we're creating history here all the time, mm. you know, so b brilliant. Paddy says, uh, what about Tom Daly and Jessica Annis? Well, Tom Daly deserves a lot of credit because obviously he's been through, like, he, he was only a kid when he won in Beijing. His father has died, who's his coach and his inspiration has died since. Obviously, he's a young fella, probably having a few distractions, and to get a bronze medal, I thought was a tremendous achievement. Jessica Annis is just like Katie Taylor. The real deal. Yeah, the real deal. Absolutely. And uh, Simon, you know, when you, when you look at how, how she performed in the Olympics, yeah. the girl was fantastic. Yeah. A brilliant uh, opportunity. And we look out, we see Railway Avenue here in Newry, folks, and if you're whatever part of the world you're listening in, mm. we, we thank you for listening in here on the Sunday evening. Last week the sun was shining brightly, now the winter is sort of coming in here, it's getting pretty dark out in Railway Avenue here. The sun is gone, mm. it's coming down <laughs> close to the top of the air, but we're in really no hurry to step. We, we, when Sean gives us a look, we'll, we'll, we'll decide to stop, Simon. Mm. <laughs> but we're looking down here, Paddy, yep. Yeah. And then B says Lance Armstrong is a legend. Yeah, B, I, oh, well, I absolutely agree with yeah. you because you know totally we, we, we're all of the same opinion. We, mm. we, we, we admire, we do admire Lance Armstrong and what he's done for cycling. Yeah. And uh, you know, and what he's done for charity as well. It has been fantastic. Yeah. You know. So. 
what can we say? You know, so, um, and I have to say the RNA TV interview our coverage in the past few game. I have to say there was people from all over the world were actually coming in. I was reading the, the comments like yeah, it was brilliant time because like, like when we when we talk about you know it's hard to believe. And again, we talk about technology. You know, here we are, top of uh, Bearsbrook and top of the dugout, and uh, we're streaming this game live around the world. We had people coming in from uh, America, mm. Dubai, uh, somewhere in Spain, Spain, yeah, and and uh, we got a lovely email in from. A young lad, Gavin Carr, in, in, in London, who, who he sent us an email and thanked us for it. So, Gavin, yeah. we appreciate that, that sort of support, and uh, that's what it's about. Yeah. But, Simon, you know, we, we're, we're learning and we're getting better and better at it. Yeah. And, of course, we're bringing what's missing, Simon. We're bringing local sport to the people all around the world. Right. And, you know, the world is a vast place because yeah. I know if you fly off to sorry, Australia or New Zealand, mm. it's 24 hours. But with Destination yeah, Europe, it's, it's just 24 seconds. Yeah, so so we we'll keep you posted. We we'll keep the whole thing going here on Destination Europe. We we did enjoy the we did enjoy Simon the, the coverage on it. We're going yeah. to try and look at some of the the results so, and, the, and the QMA League results there. So yeah. you go, Damien. Clearly Celtic two, Finn Harps two, uh, Premier Division Cree Rovers one, White Cross six, and uh, Ashgrove Rovers three, Cartwheel United three, Bohemians nil, Orchard City four. Simon, we'll talk oh, about Orchard City, City in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Midway United nil, uh, Grasshoppers three, Melbourne United three, Clan Clan, Athl Clan Athlete. Yeah, that like haven't got my glasses on. <laughs> Two in the first division, Park View was postponed. A lot of them games postponed. Oh, yeah. Down to the bottom, the Kill Bestwick Cup, Ballarat United five, Villa Rovers nil, and the Bestwick United three, Newry Celtic two. No, Bestwick two. Two draws. So, two. Had a new so and, 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 uh, it was five four to Newry Celtic and penalties. Penalties, yeah. So Simon, another cracking game. Yeah. Bestwick they got off to a great start with uh, the live coverage they had, uh, and then yeah. they finished <laughs> getting beat on penalties five four in the end of the the Bestwick Cup. Yeah. But Simon, I have to say, you know, the Bestwick fans. And uh, all associated with Bestbrook really enjoyed our, our mm. live coverage the other night. No, it seemed to be like, funny. I, I, I have quite a few friends who are uh, involved with women's stars, and it was just the, the fact that uh, it matter it was being covered live, you know. And I remember I was sitting in the house and I was sitting and watching my iPad, and I was sitting myself, my God, I, I didn't inside the road, covering a match. And then I'm watching the comments coming from all over the world. Yeah, yeah, the, the, comments thing, yeah. was, the comments was fantastic, I'm Simon. I'm not coming, coming now, do you mean? So the, the comments were brilliant the other night coming in, there's no doubt about it. Elise says, what do you think about Van Persie and Man United? <laughs> right. <laughs> they okay. Lee, I wonder, I wonder what this is, if I know a couple of Lees. No, Van Persie scored a fantastic goal last, yesterday in uh, his full home debut at United. I think he will be a star at United. He is one of the top strikers in Europe. And people say about the age and the money it was spent and all the rest of it, but you know, get what you pay for, and I think he'll be a star. Now, unfortunately, yesterday Rooney got uh, a bad gash. Yeah, he got a bad cut. Now, I have to ask your opinion this team. These blades. I, I, I would ban blades, Simon. I, I reckon blades are damaging knees. I reckon they shouldn't be used. I, I, I can't understand them. I think a young, like football, young soccer players and young rugby players shouldn't be wearing blades either. I, 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 I wouldn't let them into the house, Simon. I, I firmly believe the blades should be banned. Yeah. I think they're, 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 they're it's, it's like everything else. It was a good marketing sales by some of these big super companies that they come out with this great mm. idea. You know, blades, blades, blades. You know, the bottom line was, Simon, if you used a blade, mm. you, 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 you wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be, you know. Right. Yeah, well, I just funny. I just, like, as far as conference, I've only won them a few times, and a couple of ways, I'm not really oh, sure right. of them. And the new these surfaces, I, I noticed like the amount of metatarsal injuries, the amount of cruciate ligament injuries. Okay, the gash yesterday did come because that's what you can say it was a blade. And, oh, yeah. you know, now, uh, and people give all, people say about soccer players laying down. You have to give Rooney credit, but Fred was due. Rooney was actually sitting looking at it. Yeah. He wasn't going, no, he, he wasn't, you know. So we, 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 we're back to Van Persie. I I'm reckon. Great buy for Man United, yeah. and I think he'd be a star with United. So do I. Now, really? and again, Simon, Liverpool 2 this afternoon, Man City 2. Yeah. Liverpool gifted Man City. Two goals. Oh, dreadful performance. And, and, and that was a huge game for Brent Rodgers. Rodgers was under pressure. Rodgers is under pressure. You know, like, that was a big... Yeah. And, you know, I know what I... I think Rodgers, yeah, I think Rodgers is under pressure. And I'll tell you for why. Like, he has inherited a team which, uh, in my opinion, is, is a bit disjointed. Andy Carroll saga won't go away. It's not Andy Carroll's fault. No, I mean, I mean, he, he wants to play. He wants to play. I, I don't think it, um, that uh, Rogers wants Carroll. I don't um, think he wants him either. You know, I, I don't think he wants <coughs> him. You know. Now this guy, Sir Sahin, we've got a Nuri Sahin, should be a very interesting prospect. Like Kagawa at Man United. Kagawa last year was the Bundesliga Player of the Year. The year before, it was Sahin. 
Uh -huh. He went to Real Madrid. Didn't say he of Real Madrid, but then again, Real Madrid, they've got a wonderful panel of players, and this guy's only a young fella. Now he's out in loan to Liverpool. Very interesting loan deal. It's actually worth 11 million quid, this loan deal. A loan deal? Yeah. Now it's the biggest 5 million team in loan, and obviously 6 million in wages to be, has to be paid, right? Now, if he can, what Liverpool need at the moment is direction midfield, because I think, personally speaking, I'm not getting it because I'm a United fan, <laughs> I think Steven Gerrard is on the way in. I, I, I probably agree with you. I think Liverpool, like, you know, they haven't enough, I don't think they have enough scoring power up front, Simon. No. I, I'm not convinced that Suarez, and I, I, I mean, I, I did think he was a good player, but he's not scoring the goals. No. You know, he, Liverpool's he, chance to conversion rate last year was one of the worst in the Premier League. Yeah, and you need to be scoring goals. Yeah. There's no yeah. question. Well, put it this way, I felt, I actually, as, as a United fan too, it's very hard for people to believe, but I actually felt sorry for Skirtle today. He had a fantastic goal, and they made a complete mess. Oh yeah, was, uh, with the pass back to Tevez in the second half, you know, and uh, one on one with uh, Heber Tevez, so it was one going to be one winner. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, so. it's, it's a tough one for Liverpool, oh. but the pressure's going to be on them now for for the next the next couple of matches. Yeah. And Rodgers, but I still think you have to stick with Rodgers because he knows what he's doing, Simon, and he has the ability to play the well, football. I tell you something here now. Swansea City last year were a complete revelation. Even this year, yeah. But who's the manager? Uh, Michael Ledruff. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't he some player? He, yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Yeah. So like you know. So you know? just saying, Robert Martini <laughs> wants to say to tighten up in defence <laughs> after the. So if he wants him to tighten up in defence, well, I had to be fair now because I was listening to Martini's interview after the game today, and he was giving out about Suarez's goal. Now, as a uh, person being as a United fan again, one of my biggest, very Suarez's biggest fan, but that was a piece of genius. Ah, yeah. There was no way he could defend that goal, no way. So I'm just going to have a tweet in here. I'm a senior Camogie Championship final tomorrow evening. In Graham Moore, Tully Sarn versus Katie throw in 7 o'clock sharp. And I can tell you, if it starts getting dark like it is tonight, yeah. there's a wee bit of rain, uh, you could be in trouble there. Yeah. But that game is on. Graham Moore. That's probably around 7 o'clock sharp. Dude, so it yeah. start at 7. You know, and Simon, we have to say congratulations to Creve Rio from Camilla, who yes. are participating in the junior final in Hurling in Armagh next, next Sunday. Yeah. Simon. Fantastic, fantastic achievement. achievement! Fantastic achievement! I was, I was funny. I had a, a Facebook a note from Pat McGuinn, and uh, obviously, you know, as you know, Pat's a big supporter of Creevera, and what they have done in that area for Hurden is absolutely brilliant. It's because obviously, this is obviously this area is a big football stronghold. You know what I mean? Uh, both in the South Down and South Armagh, and to have achieved that. It's just wonderful, I think. Simon, it's amazing because when you look at when you look at what they what what they, what they've done, uh, you know the young Crave Rua team. You know, like they've they've came from nothing. Mm, yeah. Now they're competing in, in in a county final, and they, they were beat last year. I think it was the under 16 final, and they were winning that game right up until the last two or three minutes, and now they're in the junior final. Simon. It's going to be a great occasion for them. What's your, in your opinion? You know what the name. Well, they're playing Darry Noose. Darry Noose are Darry Noose would be the favourites for that one. Mm. There's no, no 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 question about that. But you know the way these guys from Creve Rue are are, yeah. are going. Who knows? You know they had John Crossy uh, out with them yesterday. Put them through their places and I know all the down people would know John. Yeah, Crossy John. Yeah, the, John. Yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. John, uh, a legend in in in. Uh, Harlan, yeah. so uh, bringing his little bit of expertise yeah. to, to Creve Rua. So we, we wish Creve Rua the very best again, Darry News. <laughs> At least I do, anyway, Simon, <laughs> in the next uh, next week, next Sunday. And of course, we'll be able to talk about that, some, Simon, next Sunday on the Sunday Sports. And so just here, getting back to what you were saying about Orchard City, I was talking to a very good friend of mine last night. It was awesome about you, Joe Price. Ah, uh, Joe, yes, Joe. Joe, if you're <laughs> watching in the night, <laughs> how are you? Great goalkeeper. And, uh, still is, and he's know, still playing. Still playing. Playing. Joe, you're probably near enough the same age as, as us. Uh, the uh, well, you know. he's actually the same age as me. Uh, <laughs> 22. 22. So, Joe, I know you're enjoying it. And Orchard have been a revelation. Yeah, yeah it's I'm funny, I've been a big thing about them in the, in, during, in the paper during the week that uh, they're hoping to use this as a stepping stone to get into intermediate football and maybe into. Irish League. Irish League. So, Archer City. Big plans yeah, they're going well. And of course, uh, we have to say hard luck to New York City yesterday. They were beaten yesterday by Cag Rangers. That's right. And, and course, One Point Town. One Point Town doing awful well. You Fly know. at the moment. One Point Town, uh, brilliant. Obviously, and look, at, look at Lad, Barry Gray, just been the corner here. Ah, yeah. Yeah, 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 great man. And of course, looking looking awesome. just when we're talking about the, the local soccer scene, Jackie Mooney is in for the McDonald's. Uh, Sportsman of the Year with the you know the IFA. So yes, if you if people would just log into their little websites there and follow that link and see it because uh, we'd like to see Jackie well. Jackie, yeah, Jackie from Camera Road. Jackie from Camera Road. You know it's a. Uh, Simon, again we're rattling towards the end and Sean's giving us the lucky send. We're probably nearly run out of time. But Simon, you know it, it is great that we're bringing local sport. You know we're going to cover. You know if, if if anybody would want their sport covered, Simon, mm. we'd ask them to get in touch with us. Yeah. You know, soccer, rugby, Gaelic, hockey. Mm. Uh, 
rally car yeah. driving, you know, all that. Yeah. Handball, the World Handballs are coming up same in, in October in Dublin, and they're coming from all around the world at that one. Huge, big event, and uh, James Doyle. James Doyle. Uh, Aiden yeah. Aiden's co recovering from an injury. She She's trying to get, get herself fit for that. Of course, both of them are world champions. champions. So, uh, Remember I was talking to James a couple of years ago, and he's a lovely guy, well, and you, don't, you wouldn't expect, just, just the, this guy sometimes he's a world champion of the sport. And like he's just a guy you can sit and have a bit of crack with. Yes, and hopefully maybe we'll get him on, on the Sunday sports yeah. show and we'll have a we'll have a wee talk with him, Simon, yeah. because uh, again, you know, when you're talking about world champions, we don't have an awful lot of them yeah. and we have to cherish the ones that we, we can get. So hopefully uh, we'll have another wee first on Destination Yuri when we talk to uh, our world champion James Doyle live here on the Sunday sports show. Simon, I'm just looking down and I have to give a, a little dig to Pat Spillane because... Because <laughs> uh, you, know, you always do, you know. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, you have to give credit where credit's due, right? Spillane tipped Cork, right? Yeah, and so did I. Yeah, well, okay, well, but I'm not saying you're anything like Spillane, <laughs> saying you're even more civil and all that. But poor Pat, he, he doesn't know, I think he doesn't know who to support. He doesn't know why he wants to support Donegal because they beat Kerry, and he Ooh. still thinks Kerry's the greatest thing from sliced bread. I but see, but Simon, Pat, Pat, Pat is playing the media game. Of course he is. You Simon, know. the new management in Kerry. It's Morris. Sheehy. Yeah, she, uh, and it's Moynihan. Morris. She, Moynihan and Sheehy. That's some team. And I can tell Seamus you, Seamus Moynihan, I'll never forget seeing Seamus Moynihan play in the Sigerson in 1990, 1981, and he was just outstanding. I'll never forget it. Him and, of course, Fitzy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, Simon, and, uh, that's, that's, some, that's some team for Kerry. It'll, it'll be interesting because uh, I was reading in the paper today that uh, Paul O'Shea reckons Fitzmaurice is a bit you know, like a, a bit careful. You know, he'll like, take care, and then he has the, obviously the flair of Moynihan, and she, she won eight medals. Oh yeah, get, so, so get all Ireland medals. Uh, uh, obviously, we haven't heard the end of <laughs> Kerry. There's no quest. No. Kerry will be coming back. Oh, they will, surely. With with that, you know, th that team, Kerry. You know, it's going to be interesting, but I can. I, I still think I don't care. Donny Gall, Simon, to me today. Donny Gall. It's all been about Donny Gall. That's what it's about. Yeah. This weekend, it's about Donny Gall. Last weekend, it was about Kilkenny. No two ways about it. And of course, Simon, we'll we'll, we'll probably wrap it up here because Sean's looking at us and saying, "Lads, your time. You overstayed <laughs> your time as usual." But listen, we'd like to thank everybody for listening. We have to thank, of course, Design Works Ireland for for sponsoring the show here this evening. And of course, they they do apps and sites and webs and all that. Uh, we still putting it out to them, we're asking them to design an app to uh, do away with uh, And if there's an email address folks, yeah. you want to mail us in? Yeah, so if you have any ideas, would you, what would you like uh, Design Works to design an app for? It's all there folks, so uh, you can see it on the screen. Uh, I don't know if Paul Grimley or James McCartan would be uh, emailing Design <laughs> Works Ireland to, to see can we come up with an app to beat Donegal, but Simon, I can tell you what, they probably should. Well. Uh, they've set the benchmark, Kevin. That's it. So there's they've set the benchmark. A team who from 2009 to 2010, team of no hopers. Simon, two years later in the All Ireland final. We went to Letter County a couple of years ago and beat that team by about 20 points. Here, bit, yeah. here they are two years, three years later in the All Ireland final. Yeah. And I have to say, Simon, real contenders. Yeah, we, we beat them two years ago in Bally Buffet. Very tough championship game. Beat them by five points after extra time. We had only get the All Ireland final that year. Very unlucky to lose to Cork by a point. Today, they just dismantled the whole rigmarole. They really did. Well, uh, you know, we're going to wrap it up now, folks, and we're going to thank everybody for listening. And of course, you can pick this up uh, later on on Destination New website, the latest video. And uh, yes, we will be covering uh, more uh, local soccer live games. Uh, obviously, with the, the, the weather starting to close in, it'll not happen during the week. It'll probably be on a Saturday. And of course, we'll be bringing you more games. Uh, Leighton was brought to you the other night. And we're going to be looking at the Armagh Championships as well. So we'd like to thank everybody for tuning in this evening, watching wherever what part of the world you're in, whether you're in uh, the tomorrow, today, or just now, because <laughs> that's the way it is going around the world. You could be from coast to coast, pole to pole, satellite to satellite. But here on the Sunday Sports Show, down here in Uri, Thanks for listening. I have to thank Simon again Thanks for, much, for helping, helping me out here this evening. And of course, our production assistant here tonight, Sean. Without Sean, this just wouldn't happen. And Sean's going, lads, it's time, <laughs> it's time to go home. And the sun has gone. It's starting to close down here on Railway Avenue in Uri, Simon. And on that, we'll say thanks for listening in and thanks for your comments. And of course, you can still put your comments in on the show here and we, we'll pick them up next week. Uh, thanks a million for listening in here this evening on the Sunday Sports Show from Destiny's Uri. Until next week. <laughs>